Hi, and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. In this scenario, I wish to create a summary of the make of car along with the total units of cars sold. And as you can see, I've got some repetition in my make list, and that could continue. I could have some repetition, but I only want one instance of Kia, one instance of Chevy, Ford, etc. in my results. So we're going to take a look at a few functions today that will help us get there in a very dynamic sense without having to construct a pivot table. Okay? Pivot tables are great, but sometimes their structure limits their flexibility in terms of where you might want to place the data, how you might want to use it in the context of other parts of your spreadsheet. So we're going to use some formulas to get this done. Now first, I'm just going to create like a little header here that says summary. And I'll maybe merge that across two cells, maybe throw a splash of color there, and then I'll put the header make, and then total uh, units. So we'll do it that way. There we go. Okay. And so I want to have, starting in cell E3, a unique list of the entries in column B. So I'm going to say equals unique, open paren, and then I need to refer to a source array of cells from which I wanted to extract the unique values. Now, I don't want to select the entirety of column B because there's a couple of problems there. For one, you would have an entry here called make since make is one of the values in B. So I don't want to select the entire column. You would also have an entry for blank cells of which there are over a million because we know if we select the entire column, that's a million forty-eight thousand four five hundred seventy-six rows. I don't want that. I just want the cells where there's actually data. So in order to make a dynamic array that is just the cells with data starting in B2, I don't wish to include B1, we're going to use the offset function. So if you haven't seen the offset function before, I do have a dedicated video for that. Please check it out if you need some refresher on that. Uh, here's a brief, brief overview. With the offset function, we pick a reference cell, which in this case will be B2, and then we need to indicate how many rows and columns away from the reference point marks the start of our range. In other words, if B2 is not just the reference point, but also where we want the range to begin, then we say comma zero for zero rows and comma zero for zero columns. So these first three parameters of the offset function set cell B2 as the starting point of my dynamic range. Now what makes it dynamic? Well, we're going to specify the height of the range uh, using uh, the count A function. See, right now we could put in the number 5 to say that our range is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows tall. But if we add more data, that would need to be 6 and then 7 and then 8. So we're going to use the count A function, which will count all of the used cells in column B. So right now, the count A function with column B would give you a value of 6 because there's a header cell here. So there are 6 used cells in the column. So we'll simply put a, a minus 1 because we don't wish to include the header cell. The last parameter of the width function or, or of the offset function is the width. How wide is this dynamic range? And it's only one column in width. So right now, what I've got is the unique function and the array that we want to make or produce unique results from is this dynamic range starting in B2 and going down X number of rows based on the number of entries in column B minus one. So I'll do a close parenthesis on the unique function. And there we go. We now have that uh, list of unique values. And one of the unique, no pun intended, capabilities or functions of the unique function is that it spills the formula down automatically. It's not like I have to drag the formula down. The unique function recognizes that there are four unique values from my source range. So it automatically, as I like to say, fills the rest of the entries. So if I go in and add an entry for June of 2019, and that value is going to be BMW, we see that BMW shows up in the list. I haven't done anything to aggregate the numbers yet. We'll do that in just a moment. If I uh, add July, 
Now, let's say July is another entry uh, for Kia. Then nothing changes here because Kia is already a value. So it's only tracking uh, the unique values. And again, we'll do one more. We'll add the uh, August entry. And uh, let's say this time there is another new value. We'll say Tesla. And of course, Tesla gets added to the list. And there we go. So the unique function is generating a unique result uh, in this range of cells. And so the entries in column B will continue to grow, but only unique values will show up here. And that's fantastic. There's a similar function that I'm going to incorporate here called sort because I'd like this to be in alphabetical order. So I'm going to wrap my original formula inside the sort function, which like the unique function will automatically spill down to the other cells. So we hit our enter key and now we have BMW at the top going down to Tesla at the bottom. And so now what I can do is I can do a sum if function. So we'll say equals sum if. And my range of cells where I'll be checking for my criteria is column B, comma, the criteria value, well, BMW in this case, cell E3. And then finally, comma, what range contains the numbers I wish to sum? That's column C. So with this formula, you're saying if the value in B equals, in this case, what's in E3 is BMW, then sum the matching value from C. And there's only one entry for BMW and the number should be 70. And there we go. And now I can just fill that formula down and it'll continue to work for the other entries. And we can see, for example, in our list, we have um, two entries for Ford, eight, uh, 60 and 50. So Ford's value is 110. Also, we've got two for Kia, 80 and 30, also equaling 110. And so now if I go back and add another month's worth of data, let's say this is going to be another, say, oh, we'll add another entry for BMW. And we'll put the BMW value here at, say, uh, 50. So, of course, BMW now grows from 70 to 120. And the, there's no additional row being added here because it was not a unique value. It was just another entry. But if I go and add, say, uh, Mercedes to this list, we see that the list is now extended. And then we'll put a value in for Benz. And then we see the 30 there. Now, what has happened is it's pushed the, it pushed the data down further. Uh, and so the original formula that I wrote needs to be extended down to cover Tesla. Okay. And then we do have this uh, accounting style that kicked in into this cell. And I don't want that, right? So I'm going to adjust those columns to that column to just be general because it gives me that weird indenting of that entry. But there we go. So at, at, at best, I'll have to extend my formula down when I add a unique value. But the, the decision of whether or not the entry is unique and then what order it should be in is being handled by the implementation of both the sort and the unique function. And then the fact that it's going against the correct range of data is handled by the offset function. So it's not grabbing the blank rows below and it's not including the word make. I hope you found this useful. Please tune back in soon for more Excel demos with Rich Kerr. Have a productive day.